Hi guys, thanks for stopping by the Teacher Nerd screencast on how to use Google Sites to share some knowledge. Let's get right down into it. Once you're signed into Google, I like to go there from my drive. So once I click on my waffle, I can select the drive icon. And then once in drive from the plus sign, I bring that cursor down. There we go. I'm given some options. And I find Google Sites. Now you might get the question if this is your first time going in, do you want classic sites or new sites? The screencast is strictly uh, using new sites. So now that we have our site up, we'll call it demo site. And since it's our home page, we can type in whatever we want our user to see first as they get there. Now about our home page, we are able to upload an image from our computer. If you're on a Chromebook, you can go from your Google Drive. You can select an image from a gallery that Google offers. You could search the web. There's a couple different things you can do. You can also change the type of header that your user will see. You can go with one that only has the title, no banner at all. Then you have the choice of a banner, a larger banner, or something they refer to cover, which will cover most of the page. You're also able to upload an image. Let's pick this one. And if I didn't like something that I did, I do have this arrow right here, which allows me to undo. And the one right next to it allows me to redo. I also have this icon, which will show me what it'll look like if we're viewing on a larger screen, like a computer or a laptop or a tablet or a cell phone. If I wanted text on my page, I have options over here for text, images, embedded links, or something directly from my Google Drive. I can also double click to get the same options. Once I have something inserted, I can adjust the size and then use ghost grids to help with placement, to keep everything organized. We can center it. If we don't like it, we could trash it. If we wanted to make it a link to either another page in this site or an external link, we could copy the external link with Control C. Once we hit the link tab, we hit Control V to apply the link. And then when our user comes to our home page and taps the link, it takes them to the outside page. Students are also able to collaborate. They can share their site with another student. They can share their site with another teacher. If two teachers are working on something together, they can create a site for possibly a club or a workshop um, and both work on it together. We hit our share button. We enter the person's email address in. We hit send. And if everything's done correctly, we don't get an error message. Now, if we wanted to add another page, the Pages tab allows us to do that. We have our home page, and down at the plus sign, we can add another page within this site, or we can add an external link again that will show up on our home page's menu, which helps navigate your site. 
So let's do a new page within this site. We'll entitle it our second page. Click done. And it's put right into the mix for us. We're now on our second page. And if we wanted to go in and add text or images or something else, we would do it just like before. We could tap one of these, or we could double click inside any area to upload something. Now, one of the tabs we haven't talked about so far has been themes. But before going to themes, if we scroll down on insert, there's different layouts sites has to offer, as well as different ideas like maybe inserting a table of contents, an image carousel, which ends up being pretty cool. Uh, maybe a specific button that will activate something else. A divider for the page. A specific link straight to YouTube, so possibly embedding a YouTube video into your page. Uh, there's all kinds of different tips and tricks down here that the students love to play around with. So let's just say we want to change our layout a little bit to have some pictures along with some information it's as easy as clicking this slide right here. So let's move on now to the themes tab. This is going to allow us to change everything, the entire look of our site. Um, we can go down here for hit level. I like the yellow. See what it looks like in green. I like the green as well. And then if we go back to our home page, it is also changed and if we go to a view of what it might look like on a laptop or I'm sorry excuse me yeah a laptop looks good might have to change the image and it looks like our link does still work so right now things are looking pretty good once I do a little more content adding and then have someone edit it for grammar punctuation I guess the content in general um, it might be ready to be published once it's published you would want to copy your link so you have a link to the home page and then can share that link on Twitter you can share it via email it pastes nicely into Google Classroom and all of your students can then check out the web page. One thing we have come across, my co-teacher Kim Bray and I, uh, it is helpful before the students start creating their websites. They go out and they look at a bunch of different websites and possibly even take a list. What did you like about websites? What did you find difficult about websites? And then start to plan their website, maybe even on paper with pencil before jumping into creating their own on Google Sites. So I hope this screencast was helpful for using Google Sites to help you or your students spread some information. Thanks for stopping by. Check us out at teachernerds.com. You can also be found on Twitter at teachernerds and on Instagram at Teacher Nerds Podcast, and remember that's nerds with a Z.